Welcome to ReneeEnergy.com on YouTube, the hub for all things renewable energy and sustainability. Our channel is dedicated to bringing you the latest innovations and insights in green energy, including cutting-edge developments like green hydrogen. Whether you're a sustainability veteran or just beginning your journey, we have something for everyone. Join us on this channel to explore inspiring projects for a sustainable tomorrow. We bring you the latest in renewable energy, sustainability, and cutting-edge technologies. And don't forget, for more in-depth information and resources, visit our website and subscribe to our newsletter for the latest updates and exclusive content. Hello and welcome to ReneeEnergy.com. In today's video, we're diving into the cutting-edge world of thermochemical water splitting. This process offers a revolutionary method of producing hydrogen using high-temperature heat. The potential for this technology to drastically reduce the carbon footprint of hydrogen production is immense. Today, we'll explore how thermochemical water splitting works, where it's being tested, and some practical examples where it's already making an impact. Stick around to discover how this emerging technology could play a key role in the clean energy transition. Let's begin by understanding the basics of thermochemical water splitting. At its core, this process uses heat to break down water molecules, H2O, into hydrogen, H2, and oxygen, O2. What makes this technology special is that it doesn't rely on electricity, unlike traditional electrolysis. Instead, it uses high temperature heat, typically exceeding 500 degrees Celsius, making it more efficient when paired with renewable heat sources such as solar thermal, geothermal, or nuclear energy. One of the most researched methods of thermochemical water splitting is the sulfur iodine SI, cycle, where a series of chemical reactions take place using iodine and sulfur dioxide to drive the splitting of water. This method has shown promise for large-scale hydrogen production due to its efficiency and potential scalability. Another common approach involves metal oxide cycles, which use metals like zinc or iron that go through oxidation and reduction cycles to release hydrogen from water. While thermochemical water splitting is still in development, several pilot projects are already showing how practical and game-changing this technology can be. One exciting project is the hydrosol plant located in Almeria, Spain. This facility uses concentrated solar power, CSP, to drive thermochemical water splitting reactions. Here's how it works, CSP technology uses mirrors to focus sunlight onto a central tower, heating it to extremely high temperatures. These temperatures are used to heat metal oxides, which then react with water to produce hydrogen. This project represents one of the leading efforts to integrate solar thermal energy with hydrogen production and could become a blueprint for scaling the technology in sun-rich regions worldwide. Another example is taking place in Japan, where the Japan Atomic Energy Agency JEA, is working on the sulfur iodine cycle using heat from nuclear reactors. Japan has ambitious hydrogen goals, and the integration of nuclear heat with thermochemical water splitting is part of their plan to produce large quantities of clean hydrogen. Japan's research focuses on using very high temperature reactors, VHTRs, which operate at temperatures high enough to efficiently drive the thermochemical cycle. By utilizing heat from nuclear energy, Japan aims to reduce its reliance on fossil fuels while producing hydrogen for use in industries, transportation, and electricity generation. Thermochemical water splitting isn't limited to nuclear and solar power, it also has exciting applications in the geothermal sector. Geothermal energy is a renewable source that taps into the Earth's heat to generate electricity, but during this process, significant amounts of waste heat in the form of hot water or steam are produced. This is where thermochemical water splitting can come in, instead of wasting that heat, it can be harnessed to produce hydrogen. One of the most promising regions for this technology is Iceland, where geothermal energy is abundant. Iceland has long been a leader in renewable energy, with almost 100% of its electricity coming from geothermal and hydropower. Icelandic researchers are now exploring how to combine geothermal heat with thermochemical water splitting to produce green hydrogen. The country's abundant geothermal resources and commitment to sustainability make it an ideal candidate for scaling this technology. The hydrogen produced could not only be used domestically but also exported to regions that lack renewable energy resources, helping drive the global hydrogen economy. In New Zealand, geothermal plants are also looking into integrating thermochemical water splitting to use waste heat more efficiently. New Zealand has extensive geothermal resources, and the integration of hydrogen production could help the country further reduce its reliance on imported fossil fuels. By capturing waste heat from geothermal power plants, New Zealand could generate clean hydrogen while improving the overall energy output of its geothermal facilities. 
Another exciting pilot project is happening in the United States, where Sandia National Laboratories is working on a solar-driven thermochemical hydrogen production system using a cerium oxide cycle. Cerium oxide is a metal oxide that can withstand high temperatures, making it an ideal candidate for solar thermochemical cycles. In this process, concentrated sunlight heats cerium oxide, which releases oxygen and leaves hydrogen as the product. The advantage of using solar thermal energy for this process is that it taps into an abundant and renewable heat source, allowing hydrogen to be produced without emitting carbon. The sulfur iodine cycle, which we mentioned earlier, is another process showing great potential. This cycle is being actively researched in collaboration with various energy companies and research institutions. One such initiative is the partnership between the U.S. Department of Energy and research institutions to develop thermochemical splitting technologies that could be integrated into existing power plants. By using the heat generated from nuclear or solar thermal plants, these facilities could double as hydrogen production sites, increasing their efficiency and profitability. While the sulfur iodine cycle is one of the most well-developed thermochemical processes, other cycles like zinc oxide-based cycles are gaining traction. These cycles use zinc oxide that, when heated, breaks down into zinc and oxygen. The zinc then reacts with water to form zinc oxide and hydrogen. The ability of this cycle to leverage high-temperature solar heat makes it another promising approach for producing green hydrogen using renewable sources. While thermochemical water splitting holds great promise, it's not without challenges. The most significant hurdle is the extremely high temperatures required for the reactions to occur, which presents engineering and material science challenges. Systems that can handle these temperatures while maintaining efficiency and safety need to be developed. Additionally, improving the efficiency of these thermochemical cycles is key to making the process commercially viable. Ongoing research is focused on developing new materials and refining reaction conditions to reduce energy losses and improve hydrogen yield. Despite these challenges, the potential benefits are enormous. Thermochemical water splitting provides a carbon-free way to produce hydrogen, making it a critical technology for decarbonizing sectors that are traditionally hard to electrify, such as heavy industry, aviation, and shipping. Hydrogen produced from this process can serve as a clean energy carrier for various applications, from electricity generation to fueling vehicles. Imagine a world where we can use solar, geothermal, or nuclear heat to produce unlimited amounts of clean hydrogen fuel, without relying on fossil fuels. This is the vision that thermochemical water splitting promises to deliver. The hydrogen produced using this technology will play a pivotal role in transitioning to a low-carbon economy, helping us tackle climate change while ensuring energy security. As thermochemical water splitting moves from the laboratory to real-world applications, we're seeing collaborations across the globe. From solar thermal plants in Spain to nuclear projects in Japan and geothermal initiatives in Iceland, the integration of this technology into existing renewable energy systems offers a path toward large-scale hydrogen production. These early pilot projects serve as models for the future, demonstrating the potential for hydrogen to become a mainstream energy source. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into thermochemical water splitting, be sure to subscribe to ReneeEnergy.com for more insights into clean energy technologies and innovations. Together, we can build a cleaner, greener future. Thanks for tuning into the ReneeEnergy.com YouTube channel. We trust you found this episode enlightening and motivating. There's a world of innovation and opportunity in sustainable energy, and we're delighted to share this journey with you. Stay in the loop with the latest on renewable energy and sustainability by visiting our website and subscribing to our newsletter. Your support is immensely appreciated, it's truly invaluable to us. Don't miss our next video on new trends in renewable energy. Follow us on social media for the latest updates. Enjoy the video? Like, subscribe, and share for more green insights. Thanks for watching.